Hello, I'm John O, and I thought I'd make a video on Cubase expression maps and specifically what I feel needs to happen to actually make them better. Like, expression maps are a great idea, but they just have inherent problems and they need an overhaul. And I just figured that trying to make a video to show exactly what the pitfalls of them are and how they could be made to actually go from great idea to incredible functionality for composition and writing. Um, please don't think this is some video, some hate video on Steinberg, or, you know, or me bitching and moaning. I mean, I am English and uh, it's not raining today, so I have a lot to complain about. But, um, you know, I love Cubase. Cubase is my best friend. So I, I, I would even get a tattoo of Cubase. Might as well get a back piece tattooed on me. But um, we need to sort out expression maps. Like, it's driving me crazy. Um, Currently, I'm making a lot, like a ton of expression maps. I'm making a touchscreen controller for Cubase and Nuendo and doing that with someone called Clelson Lopez. Anyway, that's another story altogether. But I thought whilst I'm actually in the thick of it, making so many of these things, it's just constantly reminding me of how this could be better. So let's uh, have a look at Cubase. I'm going to specifically use the next one I'm actually making. So it's actually of some use to me. Um, and instead of fast forwarding these, just so you actually get snippets and stuff, I figure that you can actually watch the process of an entire expression map being made so you can experience the pain and the misery that one must endure to actually get to the end of one. And uh, <laughs> we have a patch here um, with 16 articulations. So this isn't an insanely big expression map, but I mean, for example, I've got logs of every single thing I've made. And um, uh, the biggest one so far that I found is Spitfire, Chamber Strings, Violins 1. There are 51 articulations. Um, and <laughs> when you're making, as I call the mega patches like that, this can become a serious drag. So first things first, we're going to use this. Um, you can do this in contact, anything like that. This is not a tutorial on how to completely use expression maps. Maybe I'll make one if anyone's interested. but. Let's actually get this started. So we're going to load up an expression. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to create a new expression map. Let's create a new one. 24 bases. One. I'll name these properly so you know what they are. OK, and let's line all of this up so we don't have to page hop from bit to bit, make it sort of as seamless as possible. Right, so we know we've got 16. Um, something I personally do, just so I don't get confused, is I have a look at them and see what I want. And I'm going to have the longs first, which are sustains, if you don't know what the longs are. Um, so we've got seven here. So we're going to create seven slots. Then I'm going to number them using program changes, because that's what I'm using. And yeah, there is an option to speedily do this down here, but we're not going to go into that right now. So let's label this stuff. Now I'm not putting long before them because in my touch screen, they go into an area that define longs, but let's not talk about that. Super salt font. Super Soul Tasto. And then, of course, the, let's get that correct. Of course, the classic Flautando, which stands for flute like quality in Latin. Okay, so now that's all good. You know, that's just how it is. You have to manually put data in and stuff like this. Now, just as an example, I'll do one of these in full and then I'll show you how I do this to make it the fastest process possible. Obviously, this is using UAC, which in here is CC range. So I'm going to I'm going to use CC32 like all of the other Spitfire libraries. And so over here on the expression map, we're going to select controller. We're going to select 32. Now, just for simplicity's sake, because these aren't multi timbral this is just something that you learn. Um, I'm not going to bother with the UAC convention because there's no need. I'm not going to have, I can't put any more Spitfire players into this player. So I'm just going to simply make the range of this one button one, value one. So over here, I'm going to put value one. 
now I've shown you how to do that. So for what I would what I would typically do from the start, I wouldn't even bother with that. I would just click on the track, um, uh, the articulation sound slot, and then I'd hit plus. Then I'd go through all of them. Okay. Now I know they're all on note on, which is wrong, but it's just a start. And then I put them all into the MIDI channels. You have to do that so you can use the up and down arrows, which is the fastest way. Now I would actually go through each one. And so we're going to change this to 32, change that to two and so on. Let's do this three. If there's a faster way of doing this, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last one for now. Okay, so they're all set up to actually work. Just quickly check those. Okay, that's all good. Um, right, so the next ones that we're going to do, we're going to have a little look and see what they've got. These are going to probably be short, so we're going to stick short in there. We've got pits, colon, you know, Bartok pits. Okay, so let's do short pits, Bartok pits. Pits and then pits, Bartok, I'm going to call it. So I know the pits are together. And then we're going to have Colenio. And then Colenio Trato, which is on the other page. Man, it would be really good if all these were just on one page so you could see them, but this is not a Spitfire problem um, and not a Steinberg problem. It is a Spitfire problem. So Cole Lenio Trato, just checking that I've got all of these. And then I'm going to put the effects last, which are going to be tremolo. Uh, hey. Okay, so trem CS pont waves and then FX one, well, as it's called, FX and then FX two. Now I might as well show you the quick way of doing this now um, because I can't be bothered to type those. Um, usually, this is when I do it when I have a lot. Um, so just go to program change messages, key switches and then flick them back to program change messages. Oh, and it won't actually, so there you go. There's an improvement already to be done. Can we just have them all so they change? Uh, typically, if you don't have any to start with, they will just change. So that's what I normally do. I don't normally bother with numbers, but. Eight, five, six. Okay, so we've done that, that, and that. Now let's do, as I said before, plus, 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 plus. Okay, MIDI channels as well. And then obviously there's no escaping this. Are you feeling the pain yet? Because we haven't started. <laughs> Twelve, that's spelt incorrectly. Oh no, it's not. That was weird. Okay. As you can already see, this is quite a laborious task. You know, we have to actually at least give the data, so it's fine. Um, I expect this uh, to be a manual thing at the moment, but. Right, now we've actually got the articulations in the sound slots. This is where the first uh, big workflow bugbear comes in. We need to create the articulation. So we actually click here and then we're gonna add custom articulation, right? Now we have to do this manually for each one, like 
I want to be able to select them all so I can just have them all appear, but you can't do that. So we've got to do each one. So let's count the clicks, including the copy and paste in, in a minute. So, okay, so that's three per one. So one, two, three. We've got to do each one. Again, could fast forward it, but I just want you to see the workflow. <laughs> been doing this stuff for so long. Um, right, now we've got the articulations, we now need to name them. So, you know, what the quickest way of doing this, in my opinion, is to double click, copy, and then click in there, and then paste, and then you've got that done. So the first suggestion here is, why can't we just create an articulation, call it whatever we want, and then when we click here, add custom articulation, and then it automatically has the name. At least give us the option just to have that automatically generate. Then it's instantly done, okay? So we're gonna delete that, and we're gonna manually change all of this. So let's count the clicks. One, two, three, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You don't have to do that, so nine. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. <laughs> nine clicks to copy this name in there. Okay. We get there. Here we go. Almost there. And last but not least. <laughs> oh, it's a click fest, right? Okay, these are all little problems, right? I'll get to the real one in a minute. Next thing I want to do, though, I want to change these to direction. So we have to click once, click twice, click three times. So it's, every one of these now needs to be manually changed, okay? Please just give us the option to actually have up here, just to actually click, be able to click them all, lasso them all, so we can highlight them all and click direction. They all just change or alter um, attribute or have in the preferences have expression maps and inside there have by default, I want the articulation type to always be direction because it defaults to um, attribute. Anyway, let's change all of these. <laughs> okay, so this is just an expression map with 16. And I haven't done any extra stuff by adding, you know, controller notes and, and uh, sorry, notes and, and uh, CC values that you want everything to be max and minimum and all that kind of stuff. And that, that's amazing being able to do all of that. But that's 16 and you've just seen how long that takes just to actually make this one. If I show you um, a Google Sheets page I've got for my touchscreen controller, we have got here just for a bit of fun just to actually see which uh, is the most. The, like I said, the biggest patch so far is Spitfire Chamber Strings Violins 1 with 51 articulations. That is a big patch. And when you're doing stuff like that with 51, it becomes a serious drag. Um, one feature that is really great here is that you can um, uh, drag and reorder stuff. I didn't think you could do that before, but that is a great thing because you sometimes want to add to them and everything like that. But anyway, let's actually talk about the actual problem, the elephant in the room, in the expression map room. This is what basically makes these useless, almost useless. Okay, timing. Right, so let's just get rid of that for a minute. We've made our map here. Let's save it and then I'll stick it in here. Might as well load it. Okay, so timing. Basically, if you're using one articulation, let's say a spiccato string articulation, and you know the timing of it, 
you you need to give it a negative track delay okay and let's say that you give it a negative track delay of minus 50 milliseconds but you select the track and then you go here and then you would select minus 50 and then it's done right that will then nudge to grid and it will be perfectly in time however when we're using expression maps and one of the points of expression maps, if not the main point of them, is to have multiple articulations on one track so you can fluidly write parts with more realism using different articulations. However, here's the huge problem with this stuff. Legatos and longs, they typically have um, uh, a longer um, cut-in point to the transient. They, have, they need a longer uh, track offset, basically, to actually move them to grid. So as an example number, let's say Legato needs a, a, a negative track delay of minus 150 milliseconds. So let's do that here. You'd go minus 150. But remember, the spiccato only needs 50, right? So we've moved the spiccatos back 150. So now they are out of time by 100, like totally out of time. So how on earth can we make this stuff in time? The answer is you can't like that is the answer like it's you you have to if you're writing a piece of music and you go oh god like it's all completely out of time it's because of the offset and therefore you the only thing you can do is manually move all your midi notes and stuff to suit this weird thing of timing and what needs to happen is there needs to be an option where we can have negative track delay on each individual articulation because this is also down to the sample library developer. If they're sloppy at cutting all their samples and don't actually marry stuff up, then it's a nightmare as well. But let's just assume that no sampled library, uh, library developer on the planet is lazy and everything is all cut exactly right, as exact as round robins can be and all that kind of stuff as well. You're still inherently in a nightmare with timing because you can't offset this stuff. And it this is every time I use this stuff, like here's an example of this being a great thing, I'm going to click on a track here, Albion One Strings, and on my touch screen, I've got buttons that control various things. Let's, if I open the expression map window here, you can see here on the left, all the articulations. If I press uh, the long button, you see it moves to the long, right? I can instantly choose what I want, how I want. And so that's a, my mouse is in the way, or let's hit spiccato. Hits. How glorious is this? Just how glorious is this to actually be able to just instantly, instantly choose anything I want. But then it all falls apart because of the timing <laughs> problem. So, you know, that if, if you forget everything else I've even said in this video and just, just give us this individual offset for each articulation, that'd be amazing. Digital Performer have actually got this now and you can offset each up to a maximum of 400. Don't do that. Give us a maximum of a thousand or, or something ridiculous. Don't limit it. But you know, you created this. Steinberg, you created this and other DAWs have stolen this and put it into their doors and now made it better. <laughs> like, you're Steinberg, you should be going, oh, that's cool guys, you steal what you want. But our version does this and should be the top of the mountain. But you know, I think I've demonstrated uh, what the major pitfall of expression maps are and some obviously the clicking and all this kind of stuff. It would just be great to actually tie that up so we don't actually have to do all that stuff. But if you just literally did one thing to make expression maps better, please change the game, as people would say, <laughs> and let us offset the timing. That would actually make so many people happy. That would actually turn this into gold. As a minute, at the moment, it's just a, a, a good idea on, on um, sorry, my camera's gone out of focus. It, as, it, as it stands, it's just a, a, a great idea that's sort of okay. I mean, if you're gonna just go through, here, let me go back for a second. If you're actually gonna just go, hmm, I don't know what I'm writing at me. Oh, actually, do you know what? I'm just gonna do a spiccato ostinato or, you know, this piece of music could really do with a nice tremolo swell. So let's just add that and you're just gonna press that one button and go, <laughs> then you would know your libraries, right? So you go, okay, I'm going to actually offset that by minus 80 and then job done. That then becomes, then it's fine. There's nothing wrong with any of this. 
But when you want to use more than one articulation that has a different timing, it all falls apart. So anyway, I'm Jono and uh, I'm sure I'll make some more videos soon. Uh, highly interesting like this one and uh, <laughs> catch you soon.